viewers it's another wonderful day to learn something new go get down to business let's have a recap of what we've done so far mineral nutrition i told you mineral nutrition is a process by which plants obtain nutrients for their flourishment i told you that plants can easily manufacture carbohydrate but they also need protein vitamins and other sorts of of, of nutrients like animals so also they do that through mineral nutrition mineral nutrition i told you we have two types this this nutrient in common form of what we call the elements so elements are inorganic substances contained in the soil that helps plants to flourish. I told you these, these elements are divided into two types. We have the macro, the major, or you call the word the essential. And number two, we have the micro, the minor, the non-essential, and then we'll have the trees or the trees elements. So these are the two types of mineral elements. Also, the last time we also discussed the, this macro element. I told you these ones are those elements made by plants in large quantities. And I told you they are seven in number. I also gave you an acronym to help remember this mineral, this macro element. NPK, K, M, G, F. N for nitrogen, P is for phosphorus, K is for potassium, C is for calcium, M is for magnesium, F is for iron, and S is for sulfur. That same last time again, we discussed this, this element in detail, giving you the functions, their sources, and also their deficiencies. Now, today we start with non as we, we start with the micro, the minor, the non essential elements. These are those elements made by plants in very small or minute quantities. There are those elements made by plants in very small or minute quantities. That's what I call non essential. They are not really necessary, but they are necessary. So these elements. They, have, they, are, they, they don't have any specific, specific, any specific function, but what they do is to help to activate enzymes. So that's why they are mostly cool enzymes. These elements are six in number. They are the zinc, the boron, the manganese, the molybdenum, the copper, and the silicon. I told you, when in your exam, you can, you can always, they can always ask you which of these is not a macro element. Why would you use the elimination process if you know the macro element, just eliminate them and then you have your answer. Now, that being said, let's go into... Remember, in, we talk about balanced diet in animals, a, food that con a diet that contains all the six classes of food in the right proportion. The plants also, they have their own balanced diet called a complete culture medium. A complete culture medium or culture solution. This is a solution or a medium containing the elements needed for the plant's flourishment in the right quantity. The complete culture medium solution is a solution that contains all the elements needed by plants in la in the needed by plants for their flourishment. That is, this solution contains both the macro and the micro elements. So just like the balanced diet, the plants also have their own balanced diet. It's called a complete complete culture medium solution. A solution that contains all these elements in the right quantity for the plants. Flourishment. Now, there's another special type of plants called the carnivorous plants. A new type of a special type of plant called the what? The carnivorous. I call them the what? The insectivorous plants. Carnivorous or insectivorous. Now, these plants, they live in an environment that does not have nitrogen. The environment that the soil does not have nitrogen, so, so they also need to get nitrogen. Just like this nitrogen is a macro element. So these plants, now these plants live in an environment that does not have nitrogen, but they have to have a way to get nitrogen needed for their flourishment. So these plants, they undergo photosynthesis, like the green plants, but the, the plant does not have nitrogen. So what does it do? It develops a something like a trap that helps it to get nitrogen. So once this trap does that, once it, an, an insect flies by, it captures the insect, squeezes the insect, and takes in the water nitrogen. So that called it insectivorous or kind of because they feed on insects carnivorous or what insectivorous in insect okay. carnivorous or insectivorous plants these plants are found in soil that are that is deficient in nitrogen so they have to have a way to get their nitrogen so what do they do they capture insects squeeze them and then take the nitrogen needed examples are your you have your pitcher plant your pitcher plant and your duda so these are the Major two, the two major types of insectivorous or carnivorous plants. Now, with that being said, let's go into animal nutrition. Animal 
nutrition. All so far, we've been discussing the plant nutrition. We've been discussing the plant nutrition. I told you the photosynthesis that helps them produce carbohydrates. Then we talk of they also need other 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 nutrients like protein, vitamins. We talk of the mineral nutrients that helps them get these nutrients. Now let's talk of animal nutrition. I told you when we define nutrition that we have two types of nutrition. We have autotrophism and then the heterotrophism. Now these ones are capable of producing their own food, so are the plants majorly. Now these heterotrophs they are not capable of producing their own, food, so they depend on already made food. Now when we talk of animal nutrition, we talk of what the heterotrophs. We talk of what the heterotrophs. That is the organisms that are not capable of producing their own food. Heterotrophs. Organisms that are not capable of producing their own food. That's majorly the word the animals. Now, when we talk of animal nutrition, we talk of majorly the Holozoic. The Holozoic, I told you when we defined also under the heterotrophism, I told you we have two types of heterotrophism. We have the Holozoic, we have parasitism, commensalism, etc. Now, Holozoic is a type of nutrition in which an organism feeds on solid food particles, on solid food particles. And Holozoic has three major types. We talk of what? The herbivores. The carnivores, and then we we'll have the word the omnivores. These are the three types, the three major types of holozoic nutrition. We have the herbivores, the carnivores, and the word the omnivores. The omnivores. Now the herbivores, these organisms or these animals, they feed on plants. So animals that feed directly on plants is called what herbivores. Animals that feed directly on plants are called what. Herbivores, herbivorous feeders. Example is your your common example, your goat, your cow, etc. Now carnivore, these are those flesh eating animals. They are those animals that feed on flesh or we call them what? Flesh eating animals. These ones they feed on grass eating animals, flesh eating animals. So these are the flesh eating animals. So example is your lion, your tiger. Examples are your lion, tiger, your jaguar. Your cheetah, it is. So these are what your carnivores. The next is your what your omnivores. These omnivores they feed on both flesh and plants. They feed on both flesh and what plants. So we have the herbivores, the grass feeding animals. We have the carnivores, flesh eating animals, and then we have the omnivores. They feed on both flesh and on plants. Example is your man, your pig, etc. Now. These are the three major types of holozoic nutrients that feed on solid food particles. In some types, we also feed what we call the decomposers. These are those organisms that break down carcass or flesh to produce nutrients for the soil. They break down carcass or, or other, other dead organisms to produce nutrients for the soil. Under the decomposers, so we might have the scavengers. We have your vulture. We also have your pig. The pig, the pig can also coincide with scavengers that are the decomposers. They break down dead carcass of flesh to add nutrient back to the soil. So that being said, these are the four types or the three major types of holozoic nutrition. Now, when they do all these things, what they obtain, they obtain what we call food. Other than your, your grass eating, your flesh eating, or your you feed on both flesh and plants, you're looking for what food. So that will take us to the next topic, food. What is food? Food is anything we take in for our nourishment. Food is anything we take in for our what? Nourishment. Food is anything we take in for our nourishment. It's anything we take in for our what? Nourishment. We have six classes of food in biology. We have six major classes of food in biology. Number one, we have the carbohydrates. We have the carbohydrates. Two, we have the protein. Three, we have vitamins. Vitamins. Four, we have fat and oil. Fat and oil. Five, we we'll have your mineral salt. And then the last but not the least, number six, we we'll have water. So, food is anything we take in for our what flourishment. And we we'll have six classes of food in biology. Now we'll take them one after the other. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is the easily common type of food you eat every day. Your flour, your your flour, your your buns you eat, your anything you eat that contains starch is carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are energy giving food. Carbohydrates 
are energy giving food. They are majorly consumed to get energy. Now, they are made up of elements of carbon and then hydrogen. As we well see, an element that has carbon and hydrogen as the major constituents. Carbon, hydrogen, sorry, and oxygen. They are made up of three major elements carbon, hydrogen, and what? Oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In the ratio of hydrogen 2 to 1 to oxygen. So that means that whenever you see a compound that has um, carbohydrates, a compound that is carbohydrates, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen must be 2 to 1. So either you have 10, 5 here, or you have, you have 12, 6 here. So 2 to 1. The ratio of 2 to 1. Now, carbohydrates, we have three classes of carbohydrates. We have three classes of what? Carbohydrates. We have three classes of carbohydrates. The first one is called the what? The monosaccharides. The second is called the what? The disaccharides. And the third one, the last is called the what? The polysaccharides. Now, before I forget, carbohydrates are also called sugars. So, whenever you get sugars in biology, you're talking about carbohydrates. So, carbohydrates, you call them what? Sugars. Carbohydrates, you call them what? Sugars. So, whenever you get sugar in biology, we're talking about what? Carbohydrates. Exactly. Now we have number one, the monosaccharides. These are the simplest form of what carbohydrates. They are the simplest form of what carbohydrates. They are the simplest form of what carbohydrate that is easily produced during the synthesis. Exactly. They are also called simple sugars. They are also called simple sugars, or you call them what your hexose, because they have six atoms of what carbon. They are called simple sugars, or you call them what. Hexose. They are the simplest form of carbohydrates. Exactly. They are called simple sugars or what? Hexose. Now, another thing about them is that they have a chemical com a chemical formula C6H12O6. So every monosaccharide must have this chemical formula. Exactly. C6H12O6. Now, now examples of these monosaccharides are you have your glucose, which is the end product of the synthesis. You have your fructose. And then you have your what galactose. So these are the three major, the three major monosaccharides in, under the carbohydrate family. Now this one, they have this, I told you they have the same chemical formula. So them have six six H twelve O six. Remember in chemical synthesis, you only have you always have this as your end product. So during the synthesis, glucose is commonly easily produced. Exactly. So these are the three major simple or monosaccharides. Call them monosaccharides. Simple sugars, we call them what? The hexose. Exactly. Now, next, we have the disaccharides. The disaccharides. Remember, we're still in carbohydrates. We have the disaccharides. These are called the complex sugars. They are called the complex sugars. They are made from the joining of two monosaccharides. They are called simple, they are called complex, sorry, complex sugars made from the combination or joining of two monosaccharides in a process called condensation. So that's an example of condens condensation. Condensation is a process of joining of two monosaccharides to form disaccharides. Exactly. So the joining of two monosaccharides will give you what we call a disaccharide. Now these disaccharides, these disaccharides, they are, they have the chemical formula C12H22O11. I told you that from the, the, the joining of two monosaccharides. So that means that we should have 66H12O6. Then plus another monosaccharide again. We should have plus 66H12O6 to give us C12H24O12. This would have been our chemical formula for the disaccharide. But because in condensation you hit two of them, you hit two of glucose or glucose or glucose and glucose together. When you hit them, one molecule of water is given up. So that means instead of having this one now, you have when you heat, when you apply heat to it, one molecule of water is given, that's what we'll have plus one molecule of water that is given up. That means one water, 12 will become 11, H2, 24 will become 22. That means the equation is now balanced in your chemistry. So that is, drink condition, you heat two monosaccharides to give you a disaccharide. And that thing about this disaccharide is that two specific monosaccharides must give you a particular disaccharide. Two specific monosaccharides must give you a particular 
disaccharide. Right? Now let's go. We have glucose. I told you when you hit two milliseconds, glucose for glucose will give you maltose. Will give you maltose. Glucose and then another monosaccharide again plus fructose will give you sucrose. Will give you sucrose. Now glucose plus galactose, glucose plus galactose will give you lactose. So this now are the disaccharide formed from the combination of two monosaccharides. And I told you they are, they are specific. This one must wear with this one to give you this. You can't wear with this to give you this. So they are specific in action. Glucose will, will give you maltose. This one this will give you sucrose, and this one this will give you lactose. And I told you we have six six H twelve O six for all these ones here plus six six H twelve O six. All these ones here to give you C twelve H twenty two. 11. I tell you, plus when you hit up, then one molecule of water is giving up as evaporation. Exactly. So these are the words the disaccharides. Exactly. Remember, the one is no saccharide, the simple sugar, the simplest form of carbohydrates. So we have a complex of the complex of the disaccharides, which are formed from the condensation of two monosaccharides. Number three, now we have all the third one, but not the least, we have the polysaccharides. The polysaccharides. The third one, but not the least, you have the polysaccharides. The polysaccharides. Now, these are the more advanced form of carbohydrates that are easily found in nature. These ones are called easy in nature. That most of your starch, your yam, your rice, they are all polysaccharides. Because now, these ones are the highest form. They are the, 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 the most form that plants and animals can store carbohydrates. Now, when plants manufacture, manufacture glucose, because they don't need them, just produce them for animals, they keep saving them. So when they store them, it now becomes what? It now becomes your starch. It's your, your yam you eat, which is now, your yam is a plant, it's also a starch. Your rice is also a plant, it's starch. So that means that polysaccharides are the most advanced form, of the most complex form of carbohydrates. Exactly. They occur easily in nature. They occur easily in nature. Now, they have the chemical formula C6H10O5. Brackets and covers brackets and C six H ten O five. So these are the words the polysaccharides that are easily natural naturally occurring carbohydrates. Examples are you have your starch, is your rice, your yam, your others all those carbohydrate sources of food. You have your cellulose. This one is found in plants. Then you have your glycogen, which is now stored in man. You know, when you eat excess yam or excess carbohydrate, your body will try to store them because when you need you might need energy in the next hour or so. So doing that, it will now convert it back to what you can use. Now, another thing I've got to tell you is that in most saccharides, it is these ones that the body can use. The body cannot use starch or glycogen. That's why when you eat yam, digestion will start to break it down to get to the final form called the word the glucose because the body, before the body can use them. It can't use this one is more complex to the body, so therefore it has to be broken down. To get to this one before the body can use them. So the polysaccharides are the usable forms of what carbohydrate. The body cannot use starch, cannot use cellulose, cannot use glycogen. It has to break that's what of digestion and biology. It has to be broken down in a series of stages to bring it down to what we call the simple sugars before the body can easily use them. So now this breaking down of this polysaccharides, the form polysaccharide is called hydrolysis. The breaking down of polysaccharides to form Polysaccharide is called hydrolysis. So the breaking down of this polysaccharide to form, I tell you, the body cannot use this one. It has to be broken down. So this breaking down, although it's digestion, is it's done in a process called what? Hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is the breaking down of complex or poly, or polysaccharides to form monosaccharides. Is that clear? Now, that being said, we've learned the carbohydrates. Now, this is of the sources. What are the sources? What are the sources of carbohydrates? You can even find some for yourself. Your rice, your yam, your... So many of them out there. Your pap, your... Anything that has flour, your your buns. That's why people don't have the efficient carbohydrates. Rather, you have excess of it. It's not like... A, you might even go to the market and just be going around, going around to see that and decide to buy buns for yourself. That is carbohydrates. So that's the sources. Then, for the efficiency, it does not have any deficiency because you can easily you can easily get it anywhere at a very cheap rate. Exactly. Thank you. That's the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for listening. We hope to see you next time. Have a nice day.